All right, so we're going to continue talking about radicals, all right, but today we're going to spend the entire class talking about solving radical equations, all right, so we're going to use this process here, these steps. Yes, there are a lot of examples because there's a lot of fine nuances for each of these, and then there are a lot of at your boards because you're going to spend about 20 to 30 minutes at your boards doing these problems, okay? Again, we have a quiz on uh, Thursday for you guys next week, so next week we'll review Tuesday, Wednesday quiz on Thursday. All right, everything's already up on Schoology, so you can take a look there if you have any questions or concerns. All right? Here we go. So let's try the first example. Step one of the process says to isolate the radical. That's just a fancy way of saying get the radical by itself. So I look, here's my radical. Is that by itself? No, it's not. There's something else on that side of the equation. There's a 5. Do you see how the 5 is not inside the radical? So I need to move the 5 over. Subtract, Subtract 5. So now I have the square root of x plus 1 equals, equals 6. Now is the radical isolated? Yes. So step 2 is to take whatever you've got here, all right, and we have a radical, what is the index of this radical? One, two. If there's nothing there, it's a 2. That number is going to tell you what power to raise both sides to to get rid of that radical. Right? This is the square root. The inverse operation of the square root is to square something. All right? So we're going to square this side. So what happens when I square this square root? They go away. All right? If I do it to this side... If I do it to this side, you got to do it to the other side. So, Rossi, you're correct. 6 squared is 36. So, I have x plus 1 equals 36. So, x must be what to be true? x equals 35. Questions? Now, we should always check it to see if it's right. What is 35 plus 1? The square root of that Six. plus 5 11. is 11. If you can't do that mentally, then write it down. Could you do, like, plug it back in on your calculator? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so you would do 35 plus 1 in your calculator, do the square root of that, and then add 5. You should get 11. And you can check it out right now. All right, go to the next example. Is the radical isolated? No. Is the radical isolated? No, there's a 2 out there. But how is that 2 connected to this radical? Okay, so I'm going to tell you right now, the, the worst thing you can do, the most, the most wrong thing you can do, is to multiply the 2 inside here. You absolutely cannot do that. All right, it's not parentheses, it's a radical. All right, it's not parentheses. So to move the 2 over, we're going to do the inverse of multiplication, which is division. All right? So we're going to have the cube root of 5x minus 3 equals 3. So now we've isolated the radical. What's going to be our next step? Raise both sides. Now, this time, the index is not a 2. It's a 3. So instead of raising to the second power, I'm going to raise to the third power. All right, so the right side is 27. What about the left side? 5x minus 3. Very good. 5x minus 3 equals 27. Then it becomes something that you should already know how to do in this class. Solve a simple linear equation. All right, so we move the negative 3 over. What happens when we move the negative 3 over? Right, 27 plus 3 is 30. So x is equal to is 6. Again, I'd stop showing those little bitty steps. If you need to show them, please show those steps if that helps you. Scala. So is it like the, the square inside of 3 is always going to just, like, you know how you know how 
I'm not sure what you're saying. This is a cube root. No, you're going to try again. So, like, every single problem like that. Yes. Is it always going to include, like, what's in the rest of... Yeah, so whatever's in here is what's left. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. So, are we supposed to end up with X, R, Z? Well, you're solving, so you should always end up with whatever your unknown is, Rossi. Whatever your letter I'm using. It may not be X, it could be N, A, whatever it is. Are we going to start using fractions? All right, let's go to example three. What is different about example three? It's two of them. There's two radicals. So if you decide to move this stuff over, you still have a radical on the other side, right? If I divide by three, that doesn't really help us. All right, so actually right away, I'm going to raise both sides to get rid of those radicals. So what do I need to raise to to get rid of those radicals? Well, what's the index? It's a two, so I'm going to square both sides. Yes, yeah, so the index is the little number. And if there's no number there, Rossi, it is a 2. All right, so what's going to be on the left side? 7x plus 2. Nothing changes there. All right, now, everybody's okay with this just becomes 3x minus 2. Is everyone good with that? But the question is, what do I do with that 3? Because that 3 is not in the radical. So we should square it for sure, because it's being squared. So we should get 9. But then how is the 9 interacting with the 3x minus 2? Very good. You guys got it? We're going to distribute, so you need parentheses. This one will be a little bit more challenging to get used to, OK? I'm holding up, yes. Again, now it becomes a linear equation. So 7x plus 2 equals 27x minus 18. Which side do you want to get the x's to? So, Rossi, I know this is like a big deal for you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't. Andy wants to get them to the right side. Adrian says to the left. It doesn't matter. So pick whatever you want. Personally, I like to have a positive in front of my x. So I'm going to move 7x to this side. When I move the 7x over, it becomes a negative 7x. So that's going to be 20x. When I move the negative 18 to this side, I'm going to do what? If this is minus 18, when it's over here, it's positive 18. So 18 and 2 is 20. So x equals 1. OK, again, check to make sure that we did it right. What is 1 times 7 plus 2? 9. 9. What's the square root of 9? So that's on that side. That's a 3. What is 3 times 1 minus 2? 1? Are we having trouble with that? 3 times 1 minus 2 is 1, the square root of that. So times 3 gives you 3. So it's true. 3 equals 3. Questions? OK, one more. Oh, man. What? Is there a radical here? Technically, there isn't, but there could be. If you wanted to use what you did on the rewind, you could rewrite it as a radical. I don't. The way that I do these is since it's isolated, right? I only have that. I'm going to raise both sides by something to get rid of that fraction. Well, that fraction is 1 third. What do I want that fraction to be? I want it to be 1, right? Because I want x to what power? To the first power. So in order to get this to become 1, I need to raise it to the reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of 1 third? 3 over 1. So I'm going to cube both sides. Because 1 third times 3 is 1. So this is 5x plus 7 equals, no, 27. Again, now it is a linear Equation like you learned in eighth grade and ninth grade. Well, now you're almost done. 5x equals 20, so x equals 4. Yes, Scala. The reciprocal of this. So if this would have been 2 thirds, I would have raised it to the 3 halves power, like 3 over 2. Just the reciprocal.